Hi, I'd like now to show you how we can use dehydration synthesis or condensation to create a larger molecule from smaller molecules. My example in this case is going to use this amino acid. We've got an amino group here and a carboxyl group, sometimes called a carboxylic acid, and that's a great name for this molecule, which is the basis for polypeptides, otherwise known as proteins. So if we take the amino group and allow it to react with another uh, group, a carboxyl, on a new monomer, we can leave behind a covalent bond, which in biology is the strongest kind of bond to hold things together. It's strong because it holds together even in aqueous solution. So here's another identical uh, style of molecule. They could vary, mostly at this purple part called the R group, but let's ignore that for now. But I want you to notice what's happening here with the amino here and the carboxyl. When they get together, we can take an H and an OH, and when they combine enzymatically, they can be removed and the electrons reconfigured to put these together. What we have here is a, a covalent bond, also known as a peptide bond, which is a very good way to hold these amino acids together. Proteins are quite durable in this fashion. In biology, we want to build things up from smaller units. That's what you just saw. And that's often called anabolism. If we want to do catabolism, to break things apart, we just reverse the process. Now, this is called hydrolysis. Hydro for water, lysis for breakdown, and the water can come in, again, assisted by an enzyme and sometimes external energy, and we can then restore the carboxyl group here and the amino group here and cause these two to dissociate away from each other. So once again, to do a dehydration synthesis, we remove the water and synthesize a larger molecule, or we can hydrolyze a large molecule back into its component monomers like this. I uh, hope that was illustrative and uh, be great to share these with you. They're a lot of fun.